Hello and welcome back to California Geology. Today I'm going to talk about uh, the California margin and metamorphic rocks, uh, really going back to when the subduction zone Franciscan formation was being formed, as well as the Sierra Nevada batholith. And so this is during uh, Mesozoic time, Cre uh, late Cretaceous to uh, late um, uh, to late Jurassic time. So if we look at the the, the profile I have here, it's a cross-section of Mesozoic California from, Creta from Jurassic time to Cretaceous time. And note on the west, the present coast ranges would be here, and that's going to be forming our Franciscan complex, the Francis which includes oceanic sediments, shales, limestones, marine chert, uh, gray wacky sandstones. There's pillow basalt lava, uh, um, and this hydrothermally altered serpentinite. Um, then as we go across the, the Central Valley, a lot of sediment that was being shed off the continent and the, the magmatic arc that was forming here in the, in the Sierra arc, we're going to see a, a, a thick pile of sediment, and that's going to be our Great Valley sequence. We'll talk more about this sequence later on. Also, I want you to note that under the Central Valley, California is kind of unusual in that the Central Valley is underlain by by a fragment of oceanic lithosphere, and we call that the Coast Range Ophiolite. Sometimes it's abbreviated as CRO, Coast Range Ophiolite. And I'll talk about Ophiolite here in a little bit. And note that in the Franciscan Formation, we're seeing um, green schist and really blue schist metamorphic rocks, so that high pressure and low temperature um, metamorphism, typical of the blue schist metamorphic rocks. Now, as we go over to um, the Sierra Arc, because of batholith, these magmas are coming up, there's going to be a region around here where there's going to be metamorphism. And that's where you're going to have this contact metamorphism where there's high temperature, uh, low to medium pressure. So the low pressure would be here. Uh, the medium pressure would be kind of around the middle here. And so here we're seeing the, the metamorphic schist, uh, metamorphic gneisses. We'll talk about what a gneiss is. And the Hornfels face these rocks, right? So these would be our, our roof pendants here, roof pendant. And so those are the ones that are being metamorphosed at contact metamorphic conditions. So the rocks we see um, uh, in, the, in the Franciscan, the, the high pressure, low temperature, low grade uh, subduction zone, and then the, the high Sierra roof pendants, high grade but low pressure because these magmas have moved up at relatively... Uh, shall. In fact, the, the depth we look at here is usually around 10 kilometers, 10 kilometers. So these roof pendants are occurring around that region there. And then as you, you, you're you going away from this batholith, uh, uh, we often call these lines here that I'm drawing, uh, they're called isograds, isograd, which means um, uh, same temperature, temperature lines, like same grade. So as you, as you're closer to the the heat source, your higher grade, as you're farther away, your lower grade. So there's a variety of grades. So right in this region here is where we see the, the, the western foothills belt. So the western uh, foothills metamorphic belt. And so that's where we'll see primarily the, the green schist faces is, a, is a, the rock we're looking for there. And so, again, the, the, the style of metamorphism is, is indicative of a really a plate tectonic boundary. In this case, the plate tectonic boundary of Mesozoic California is one of an ocean to continent convergent boundary. Uh, we have the rocks and we have the metamorphic conditions that formed uh, 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 those rocks during the Mesozoic time. Now, um, I've been talking about these roof pendants, and here is a little more detail about the roof pendants. So, what's happening is here's a, a little map view showing how um, you would see a, an igneous rock, a pluton, and then around it you would see this contact metamorphic zone called an aureole. So this, this aureole around here would be the metamorphic zone, and that is basically our roof pendant. That would be the roof pendant we see there, the burned rock, uh, the baked rock around that, that pluton. And here's a, a, a couple of cross sections so showing how the pluton would intrude the crust, and the country rock here around it would get would get metamorphosed. So that's a metamorphic zone. Then future erosion, here's an erosion surface here, is going to strip off these other rocks and expose that pluton plus the roof pendant rocks 
at the surface. And so that's how we get these roof pendants. And in the High Sierra, they're, they're very common. Now, um, I want to look at the, the ophiolite sequence. So an ophiolite refers to uh, a section of ocean lithosphere that was somehow trapped in a continental setting. Uh, remember, I always say that the ultimate fate of the ocean lithosphere is to be subducted, but here's an example, and there's several examples in California where it was not. And one of those is that Coast Range Ophiolite. There's even an Ophiolite exposed here in the San Jose area over at Alum Rock Park. But what this Ophiolite, if we look at the the, the cross-section and, and, and the, the different layers, we find that at the bottom, we, we have a, a serpentinite. And remember, the protolith of serpentinite is that peridotite mantle rock. And so we have serpentinite. So this represents a mantle. Then as we go to the next layer in the sequence, we find layered gabbros and, and gabbros. So remember, these are both plutonic rocks. Plutonic. Um, and more importantly, what, what the layered gabbros and the gabbros, these represent a magma chamber, um, essentially a, a, a mafic magma chamber, uh, where you're forming the, the, the plutonic rocks here. Um, so a mafic magma chamber. And remember, in magma chambers, when minerals start forming, they'll start, they sink to the bottom of the chamber. So the layered gabbros represent the, the in fact, we call these cumulates. So the cumulates collect down in the bottom of the magma chamber, and then the upper part does not have cumulate. And so that's just a regular gabbro. Another thing I want to point out here is because these are rocks in the crust, this line is, a, is an important break, and we call this the moho. So that's the boundary between crust and mantle can be found in an ophiolite sequence right there. And then if these are magma chambers, the magma chambers must, must, must feed feed lava to the volcanoes at the surface. And that's what this sheeted dike complex is. And so, in fact, these are the feeder dikes. So we have magma that is moving from, from these magma chambers up to the volcanoes, and they're erupting as pillow basalt lava. So these are the, the mid-ocean ridge volcanoes. And remember when the hot magma uh, erupts onto the seafloor, it gets quenched by that co cold seawater. Um... So, and then finally at the very top of the sequence, as seafloor spreading is moving this away from the mid-oceanic ridge, marine sediment will collect on top. In fact, over here, I have a, I, was, I just took a field trip this winter with my California geology class over to Marin Headlands, and we looked um, at some of the pillow basalt lavas that, that are exposed there in across the Golden Gate Bridge. And so this is a picture taken from... Uh, uh, from the Bonita Point Lighthouse and looking down into the, you see the, the, the water here, that's the San Francisco, part of the San Francisco Bay. And here you see these structures. Those are the pillow lavas. So these lavas erupted at a mid-ocean, so very nice pillow structures, all erupted at a mid-oceanic ridge. So that's an example of what you would find here in this pillow structure. Well, let's stop here for now. Mm -hmm.